Hello, everybody. I am Steve Tone Deaf Peterson. Okay, Steve Tone Deaf Peterson, and I am Jack. I love E flat. Cool. Golly, e I could. my favorite note. Mm-hmm. Love that. I don't, that'd be really embarrassing if it wasn't here, but I'm going to go back mm-hmm. and fix it. It's just so it's so warm, it's so it's just got a nice sound. That's what I think about E flat. Okay, everybody, we just finished our first day of freshman band. Yep, it was a good time. It was good. Eight was good. to noon, we st- we stood up, we m- marched in place, and we played one note. We did. That was it, right? Four hours. That's it. Oh, and we talked, and we we played yeah. a little bit of anchors away. Did you Did you come back to together as full woodwinds? No. Oh, the oh yeah 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 because you sent the kids away to work. Yeah 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 yeah. Okay, we did a little too. bit of the school song. We did. Yep. Okay. Eight to twelve. So saw a lot of new faces today. A lot of great stuff going on. Yep. Saw a lot of returning faces. Yep. Some smiles. That was the. Uh, I think that's the earliest I've woken up this summer. Yeah, me. T- yeah, it's definitely. What time do you get up? Six a.m. Five forty-five. Five forty-five. Two cups, three cups. Uh, one and a half. I'm trying to Are cut you cutting time. back. Yeah, I'm trying to cut time. You've had one and a half cups of coffee total today. Mm-hmm. Look at you. Look at you making moves. <sighs> you feel different. I'm trying to just to get the <laughs> down the brain fog down. How's that going? Um, it's a it, it's a process. Hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a process. The product is not there, but it's a process. One time during band camp. Steve decided to do a caffeine detox. Do you remember that? Yes, it was. Awful. I think that was six years ago. It w- I think it was seventeen. I think it was your oh, first. It was my year. first year as a director. Oh. You decided the week of band camp. You were like, "I'm not doing caffeine." Yeah. I w- I was astounded. I was like, really. Well, I impressed. made it one day, and the first day I was like, "Hey, this is not too bad." And the second day, <laughs> I think I figured out what a migraine was. <laughs> I was like, "Oh my gosh, it was bad." And then we've back, been back on coffee ever since. Yeah, I never, Good I times. never, I don't think I've missed a day. Maybe when I had COVID, no, I missed a day. Ouch. Of caffeine? Yeah. In lonely places. Yeah. So it was, it was pretty fun. It was actually really fun today. I had right. a good time. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know what it is, but it's like the first, I mean, the first day of school is always kind of fun. First this is like school, our yeah. first day of school, you know? And get, we, we've taught these concepts for many years yep. and have applied them. So we kind of know how it goes, and we kind of know the what's going to happen, and it's just it's kind of fun because you can always make the same jokes you come back to, right? It's a it's a good same time. thing. Yep. Yep. Um, and Steve did some things that were kind of chaotic today. It was kind of fun. You also oh. did some kind of chaotic things yesterday with, uh, uh-huh. with our little senior session. Yeah, it was good. So the classroom was kind of chaotic, and if you've ever been in one of Steve's classrooms, his classes are normally the just the quietest. Most mm. focused, calm. I was trying to set you up for you to do your little scream. Ah! <laughs> 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 <Right. laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was like, I'm the calmest. You did. You did that today. You did that today. I You're like, should I do scare. a jump scare? Yeah. The kids are like, yeah, do it. Steve just likes to go up to kids and go, ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. People in the car just like yeah, yeah. veered left. Yeah, like, yeah, oh my yeah. gosh. No, but that, I mean, I would say your classes our controlled chaos. And I mean that in a good way. Great. Thanks, Jack. In a good way. And that was kind of s- something we thought we could talk about cuz like Yeah. Um I remember there when I did my teacher orientation. You remember that Tops? Did, did you go to Tops? Yeah, teacher I did. Orientation well, program? they don't think they call it Tops then, but I remember I had uh, one of the guys that was working with us said that like learning is loud. That was his phrase. Oh, and, and nice. he said, you know, the schools have kind of adapted with the working environment and working environment back, you know, in the maybe 60s, 70s. I can't, I don't, I can't really speak to it because I wasn't alive, but it was a lot of like, do this paperwork, turn this paper in, you do this on your own, and you go do this task also on your own. And there was not like a ton of collaborating. But now in the workforce, like there's collaboration all the time. You're in meetings all the time. You're running through the office and talking to people. And it's like it can be kind of chaotic and school can kind of simulate that if you want it to. And um, it doesn't have to be sit at your desk, do your worksheet, wait silently when you're done. Right. Because that would be if I had to do that or if I had to teach that. So there's a lot more just like chaos and like sound and running around and movement and and Steve was kind of getting getting that going with mm-hmm. the 
band today and with the seniors yesterday. And Steve is a Steve's classes are chaotic but so constructive. Mm. Chaotic yes. but constructive. Okay. Is that fair? I think that's fair to say. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, that's fair. Right? In you the like best of times. In I the like best it. of times. You get going and you like to kind of like get whip it around. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Speak to us. Your okay. chaos. Go. <sighs> okay. So, like yesterday, the senior meeting we had. Right? Yes. We had 30 Thursday. some seniors in there, right? And our directors. And. I was thinking that I had a lot of things that I wanted to share with them, but that involved me talking. Mm-hmm. And then I was thinking of them waking up and coming into school to listen to a teacher talk. And I was like, that's lame. <laughs> right. Could be a buzzkill. Sure. And so I was, I had a few things on my outline. You see, I actually did a lesson plan. You did a lesson plan. He, he got into the stars. He made stars instead of bullets. Yep. It was lovely. He so was I wanted to make sure I got to everything. And I had a couple activities that I wanted to do. But rather than, I had a couple like non-negotiables at the beginning that I wanted to get to, right? And then um, we formed two lines. Did you know what we were going to do? I did. Okay. So we had two lines, face the same direction, they're parallel, Reach across the aisle, grab your neighbor's arm. That's your partner. And then we did speed dating. But to back this up, that's like that was like a very oh. proper way of how you did that. Here's how it actually went. Okay. You said I, I may have black, hey, blacked out. Johnny, stand over there. Hey, okay, Susie, stand there. Okay, everyone say hi, Johnny. Hi, Johnny. Hi, Susie. Hi, Susie. Okay, you're gonna make two lines. I don't care who's in what line, just make them kind of even go. And the kids just like, you said scurry like scurry. 12 times, right? You said scurry. You're going to scurry, which has kind of been in the Concord Band yes, lexicon. Yes, yes, That's a Scott's Bradley yes. thing, right? Scurry is just like, move there quickly, but don't hurt hurt yourself, yeah. right? So they got over there, and then you had them face each other. And then we did like the arm shake, handshake thing yeah. to try and figure out where the partners where the pairs were. were, right? It was all just like, go, go, go. There was not, it wasn't quiet. It wasn't like slow. It was loud and it was fast. Yeah. Okay, continue. And then we had three questions. First and last name, because not everybody knows everybody in that class. Mm-hmm. First and last name. Mm-hmm. Your two favorite days this summer. Yeah. And? That's a good question. What was the third thing? Was it the dog? Pat? Pet. That sounds Pat's right. in your home. Pat's in your home. Okay. And so then I said, turn to your neighbor. Tell those um, group A start. They give it. Say, okay, when you're done, group B, you give the answer. Right? Yep. And then they put their hands up towards the middle and made like a tunnel. Yes. Yeah. Right? And then we went, woo! And then the person from the end ran through the so tunnel. So you, you could shuffle down line A one place so you have a new partner. Yep. And then repeat the process. And when you started it, you were saying go, right? Yeah. And the room was maybe at like a four out of ten volume level. Yeah. And it was fine. Like, you could hear each other. It was good. Steve was playing music in the background. And then you probably did, like, four or five cycles. Mm-hmm. And then I think you stopped and said something to the kids. I said, when you s- when they say, woo, at the end of each round, the intensity was getting softer. So and I said, yes. let's back it up and try it again. Like we backed up certain rounds of that just yep. to practice that. Yeah. There's the consistency of the intensity. Mm-hmm. I like right. It. Yep. So we did probably five to 10 more rounds of that. But as we were going, the music got louder because <laughs> Steve was, Steve was playing DJ and he wanted to crank the tunes. Yeah. And I think you told everyone you need to go faster. Yes. Like you need to cycle through, you know how it's going to go. Just like boom, 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 you're three, boom, 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 three person at the end run through right yep and i also played different selections that the tempo was faster i didn't even notice yeah, that i started off with i can't even remember but boom, i ended with boom shake shake there was it yeah that? Okay. yeah so i i chose things that moved faster and faster steve has his uh famous bubble gum blowing playlist playlist summer jams which I think anyone who has been a part of the Concord band knows yeah. that our Thursday game is the bubblegum blowing contest. Yep, and and that's that, w- yep. The kids were saying that's one of their favorites because it's just so incredibly competitive. Rowdy, and it's rowdy. It's, it's rowdy. Loud. Shocking. Yeah. It's but Steve's the MC for that, so he always plays the same music. And anytime I hear any of those thong- songs, like the, the 
the banjo, the dual yeah. banjo. Yeah, I just think of that. And the Jeopardy theme on there today, right? Um, yeah. Yep. Like, so we did get that kind of rolling yesterday. Mm-hmm. That was going big, right? Yep. That was going big. But you you confessed to me that you purposefully jacked the volume up, jacked the tempo of yes. your songs. Why was yes. that? Because, well, it kind of goes back to your um, thought about the wineries. Like, did you want to turn your volume up and have everybody start speaking over you, and then you start turning the volume up and they speak over you again? I did not. Right? You didn't do that. I didn't. But I I did. You wanted that. I wanted it to happen. And it did. The room got loud. I felt like I was yelling at the people one foot from me. I was watching people. I couldn't hear. I was like, like, my name's Mr. (laughs) Hinkle. And I, I just wanted to hear what was going on. And I mean, I couldn't hear, but it was just like chaotic loud, but it was fun. It was fun. So we got through like 18 rounds of that. Yep. And then we had him sit down. Yes. Well, and you did draw it back to, because I remember the woo when you stopped it, you said, was is the woo getting louder or softer? The kid said softer. And you said, are there days where you've been told by directors that maybe you don't count as loudly or you don't call, be called to attention as loudly in October than you did in July. And the kids are like, yeah. And you're like, let's, let's figure this out now. We got this. Cause you drew it back to a real, real example of stuff that we do. Mm. Gosh, Jack, you're very complimentary of me today. I'd like to thank the I'm chops podcast. Just nation. calling it like I see it. It's all I'm doing. Okay. I'll still jump scare kids tomorrow and it'll be kind of funny. Yeah, so that you know that was kind of fun yesterday doing the doing that. Like mm-hmm. I could, if I taught two hours a week, I could be like teacher of the year. Like just one week to teach two out, maybe two hours a year. You know, two just, hours a year, I could do that. Yeah, when Steve came I, in <laughs> this morning, oh my goodness. He, like, gets in front of the kids for the first time at freshman camp. Dude, you were wild, man. It was fun, though. Okay. See, it was great. Okay, see, I don't know how much I should divulge. Be, yeah. <laughs> That's interesting because I felt like I, I, like, really needed to. I really needed to do that. That's not necessarily, like, how I felt. But I kind of gave the room what it needed. That makes sense to me. Right? That makes sense to me. And I think that's called teaching. You give the room what it needs. I was given it what I thought it deserved. Dr. Timms would say, uh, if you want 100% of what your group is going to offer, you have to give them 120. Right. You kind of went to 120 today. It was fun. Well, thank you. I yeah. it's, it's good getting that feedback. I think it's it's fun. I think where you can, okay, teachers, if you're listening, hello, wake up. If you're listening, teachers, I think you can have the chaos as long as you set the 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 objects, the objectives of what we're doing. Right? Go on. I'm with you. So we, you know, simply set up two lines where students could converse, and we added to the chaos as adults by pumping in faster, louder music. And putting it in some vocals like woo, and that really boosted it up. But it was okay that it was loud and crazy because what that group was doing where the senior class was getting together and it was trying to create a sense of camaraderie and purposefulness and mission. So they were all in doing it together. And it was a nice switch from the summer. <laughs> right. Yeah, that could have been the first time some of those I didn't kids want them. Moved. Well, I already mentioned that. But yesterday we had the remnants of that crazy hurricane. We had a tropical storm up here. But I didn't want the students, I already said this 20 minutes ago, but I didn't want them to come in and be like, hello, I'm Mr. Peterson. Let's talk about being a leader. I wanted to demonstrate how I wanted Ben to kill. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> kids, here we go. No, you did the you did that cheer with them, and I'm sure you planned out every little second of that choreography to make that cheer well okay, in advance. Okay. You've had that, that in your pocket for years. Have you heard me do it before? You've actually done that before? I learned that. That's a real thing? I learned that th- like 30 years ago. I thought you made that up on the spot. I went to a youth conference as a leader at a church in Southern Kentucky. We took a group. Are you punking me? Is this real? No. Wow. And this guy's name was Bruce Deaton. 
Bruce Deaton. And he led this youth group um, day. And we were like, my wife and I drove the van up to Lexington with the kids, right? Nice. And he did that in his case. And he actually did it during a church service, which was hilarious. It was actually during a Roman Catholic mass, which was hilarious. And but he had the kids going for it. And his name was Bruce Deaton. I bought his CD. He had, I have to look him up on iTunes, see if he's still going. This dude must be a baller. That's he cool. was. He was hilarious. But then I used to do that all the time. Like when I started as the beginning band director here at Concord, that was our cheer. We did I, that little I, thing. I had never heard that before. Um, then we put it away for a while. We, me and my alter ego, and then we got it back out. I think it's 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 just a cheer that's like um, foot stomping and you know guttural sounds and we all this kind of stuff. But it's just something a little silly enough and loud enough that the kids didn't really know what was going on. They just did it, and it, it. And it kind of g- makes you giggle. It definitely did. Right? No, it was good. That was good. So, um, so I think there's the. The difference in the controlled chaos teaching would be the difference of being a chaotic babysitter. I'm fascinated. Okay, so like the babe, like I think I would be an awful guest. I know I'd be an awful guest in a second grade, first grade, or kindergarten class. We've talked about that. We had Heidi on here. You said you'd be right in there with them. I would be right there getting those kids going. But it would not be based on any kind of structure. It would just be being zany, like yeah, a camp counselor just running around playing dodgeball. Gasoline ball. on fire, right? Yeah. And so what I'm talking about, what you were talking about, was like the chaos with the control. So like having the parameters and having the objective. But then if it gets a little uh, not out of hand, but it just gets really energetic in between, that's okay because yeah. you're, you're still in the lane. You're still in the lane. That made me think. Do you think we have any babysitters that listen to the podcast? Professional development for babysitters? It could be. Well, I, you know, they say teachers are basically babysitters. Anyway. We are. Ba- we are. Yeah. You ever seen that thing? They were like, well, then pay us babysitter wages. Per kid, per yeah, hour. Yeah, yeah, we'd, yeah. Dude, we'd be making yeah. bank. Um, but, I mean, I've I've been that guy. I've babysat either, like, cousins or nieces or nephews or neighbor kids or whatever, and I've gotten those kids jacked. And, but then they're probably napping after twenty minutes. So yeah, like mission accomplished. But there's like you know? no constructive. It's just you know jumping on a mattress and you know <laughs> ball fights and right. Sounds like a good so. good time to me. No, it is it is interesting though because you know on the other side of that, one of the things that I'm sure you're very conscious of and working toward with your kids is know when to be crazy, but also read the room like yeah. you know me well enough like if i'm like calm and i want to get going mimic me match what i'm doing mm. and you did some time with that today like your your cry to the kids your battle cry to the kids today is i am not going to tell you to stop talking <sighs> yep you were very clear about that you're like we that's that means that i am in charge of you that i am making every micro decision for you and you are you are old enough and mature enough that like you you can take the lead on this because this needs to be student led. We want this group to be student led. Right. So you you had them practice, right? Yeah. The idea was. The idea was we start class one of two ways. We either start up by the clock. So at eight o'clock, the goal is that if you're in a room and you know rehearsal starts at eight o'clock in the morning, at eight o'clock it gets silent. And maybe nobody is standing in front of you, but 8 o'clock it gets silent. Or the other way is that we practiced it with Jack in the center of the room and myself in the center of the room. And we tried this yesterday, too, with the seniors, didn't we? Like mumbling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, yeah. To either say the alphabet or count to 10 over and over. And that was hilarious because I said, okay, either say the alphabet or count to 10. And they're like, A, a B, C, D. <laughs> and uh-huh. I was like, no, just like mumble like A, B, C, D, F, G. Right? Yeah. So create some... But the idea was like I went off stage and then I came back on stage and then the idea was it was supposed to settle in. They the, they had a visual cue. So it was either a chronological cue by looking at their watch or a visual cue, cue from a teacher or student leader coming up there. So I said, you know, we did an exercise like putting one hand over the eye. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I said, look at me with that eye. Okay, now cover the other eye and look at your neighbor. <laughs> 
with that other eye. Now open both eyes and put one eye in me and one eye in this hurts. <laughs> You're like being like a gecko. But the idea was when you are in a classroom setting and you know you're getting close to doing something, you, you kind of have to have a heightened sense of awareness. It's true. You have to know where the teacher is or what the time is and understand that you're not there just to kind of cut up with your friends. You're, kind, you're there to um, do an activity. So we're looking for a way to start it that is more automated. And I think I did outlaw today. Shh. And I said, so and you cannot say, me. please stop talking. You cannot say that. Because the idea is if, if someone says that for you, who's really controlling it? They are. And then you're just like acting like you're not engaged and you don't stop until somebody says, knock it off. And the irony is it just the more you say shush or stop Shh, talking, the louder stop it, it gets. The louder it gets. Right. And then there's like some kind of like negative energy yes. in the room. Now, to think about this, some of these kids, that's the first time they've ever had to operate that way. Right. We don't have the luxury always of time. Right. Because we have to move a lot of places. We have many transitions. We have a lot of equipment to get through. But, you know, if you're in a in a classroom setting and all you need is your textbook or your device, you're sitting down when the bell rings. Right. And you're not always worried about that. But I think it's necessary for us to have that system in place so we can operate at full capacity. Yes. And it is interesting. Like you talked about this awareness you know, I think of high schoolers, that's like one of the first times that you're really like um, self-aware and also like, I don't want to say insecure because that's too negative, but like you're really worried about how people perceive you. Mm -hmm. That's like one of the first times. Yeah. But you're thinking about that, but you also don't have the full awareness of like a, you know, a 25-year-old fully, um, what do they say, fully developed brain, yeah. frontal yeah. lobe or whatever. Yeah. So you're in this like awkward in between and you're trying to figure that out. So I think that's like really healthy to kind of get kids thinking in that mindset. Like I have to be aware of where my teacher is at all times, even though it's like before class, I have to be aware of what's going on in the room yeah. or these social cues from right. the teachers and no one's going to tell me to stop. So it's on me. Right. I think that's really good for kids. Really good for kids. Right. Maybe some adults. And we, yeah. And then we also talked about, if you have a rehearsal that starts at 8 a.m., what does that mean? And because I, I did set up some freshmen, I wasn't trying to like bait them, but no. I said, what time do we start? And they said 8 a.m. And, and then you called on some seniors. Then I seniors, and I said, if you have a rehearsal at 8 a.m., what time do you get here? And they're like 7.30, 7.40. Great. Okay. So we're on the same page. And I took your lead from this from last year, but when you know we had to be full band at 11.45 today. Yep. So I said to the group, okay, what time do we need to be in the band room? 11.45. Great. So what time does that mean you probably should stop working in your small group? 11.40. Yep. Perfect. And you, you recognize this with oh the band. Gosh. They were in there on time. So we had like, what, 100 kids today? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right? And I, I said the same thing to my kids. I said, and so we, we were in the meeting room already, but I said at 7, what, no, 11.40, be at standby. And then they were. I was like in the back of the room doing <laughs> something. And then it just got quiet. And I was like, hmm. And then it got quiet at 1140. And then they, um, and then I said, okay, relax, but don't talk. And they did. And then your guys started trickling in. I mean, just trickling because they had put their stands on, away in the rack. And so they came in by their twos or threes. Mm -hmm. And it was completely quiet. I mean, it was really quiet. It was for weird. The it was great. Like the first day, I was like, it was, what? Yeah, it was really good. It's just so odd. Like we're talking about chaos in the classroom. Yeah. And there were some really chaotic moments in a really good way today. Right. But there were also some moments that if you had to be in front of that group, you might have been scared. Right. Because of how like deadpan, stared, pin drop silent that room gets. Right. right. I mean, that was kind of fun. And it seemed like people were buying in pretty well. And there were there were like fun moments in there. Yeah, there were. That was that was cool. It was a good day. I'm kind of looking forward to tomorrow. Wow, what's going to happen? What are we we already know what's happening. Tomorrow. We know, right? Wait, do we? Yeah, yeah. you lesson planned. Yeah, lesson lesson planned. planned. We when we hang up here, we can just like go through it one more time, just to make sure we're good. Okay, we got this. All right? We're gonna go forward tomorrow. We're gonna move eight steps forward. That's five yards for those of you keeping track. Wow, of it's gonna be great. That's good. Um, when we were in our rehearsal up in the lobby, you want to talk about chaos? This was fun. The 
It's a it's a beautiful space. Yeah. Beautiful space. But it's not really a rehearsal space. Right. So it gets kinda loud. Like the, the band room has the sound canceling like panels side walls on the side walls. Very high ceiling. Yes. And if it's silent in there, it feels silent. When you're in the lobby, if it's silent, it doesn't feel silent. Right, because there's always like a rush of air. And the w- the walls are hard. Yes. Yeah, so and it's it very back. high ceilings. Yep. It does not have a drop ceiling. So here was where we did some chaos today. First of all, there are kids playing an instrument they've never played before, right? And so there's a lot of like, how does this work? What do these buttons do? Oh, this slide's stuck. And then they're handing out papers because they're getting their music for the first time. We're getting stands off the rack. And I didn't think about how to teach the freshmen to rack these stands because they are different. Yes, they are from the junior high. So note for tomorrow. Um, And we didn't really use stands that much in full, but they set their stuff down and they were kind of waiting to go. And they were well trained from the previous room, so they were they were like looking up, they were waiting, and talked for a little bit about what we we're gonna do. But we just started running around the room, like changing up who's standing where, because oh. they're so like they want to stand in arcs, like that's what they were trying to do, which is good because that's what they should do, right? right that's right, right. that's like band. And so I said, okay, um, f- switch it up, stand somewhere else. And they recreated arcs, but they just went other places. Okay. And this is like a fun thing to do as a teacher, and I'm sure most teachers have done this, because you like on the first day, you want to let the kids go where they want. Right. And then you kind of see the pockets form, yeah. for better or for worse, of where the kids like to go. And I'm like, okay, I'm taking inventory. So then we did did our next little activity. And then I said, okay, blow it up completely. No arcs. Just go somewhere else. And they did. But they ended up just making arcs further away from me. And I was like, no, come in, fill the space. So I'm like yeah. doing traffic control, getting kids to move. It's not really loud, but it probably looks like a mess if you're on the outside looking in. But that's like a skill we're trying to develop is listening. And what were you trying to do? Why were you trying to blow it up? We're trying to learn how to listen, Steve. Okay. So why blow it up? Like why stand in a disjunct? How many kind of times in a marching band show do you stand in arcs and play? Zero. And there you go. And when we perform in Lucas Oil Stadium, you do feel like you're by yourself when you play. It's right. super weird. So getting them away and kind of getting them to focus maybe sometimes on their own sound, on gotcha. their neighbor sound, different neighbor sound. And I want them to get really good. I want them to get so good, Steve, at fl- like flipping from chaos to control. Right. I know Mrs. Naus talked about that yesterday in one of her goals oh, for the year, yeah, right? Yeah, she yeah. said develop the switch. And so they can be running around, but I'm doing my little countdown thing as they go. And then when I get to zero, they're like at standby looking at me. Are and you counting down? Yeah. Okay. I do that. Um, and, and then they're, they're ready to go. And I want to be able to do that. And it doesn't always have to be in the same like literal way, like moving around. But, okay, we're going to go. Um, it's raining, so we have to go inside. You're going to meet me in the lobby. Mm-hmm. You're going to grab a stand. You're going to put your coat away, do what you need to do. And I'm going to see you there and stand by in five minutes. Yeah. And then we go, right? Right. Because learning how to be in chaos is part of the marching band game. So there there again is kind of like giving those objective rails where Mm -hmm. they can box themselves in. Mm -hmm. I think so. And you and I was thinking about this today, too. I was trying to I was asking a lot of questions like hand raisey stuff. And I'm sure I got this from you. But like I'm just like, well, you guys raise your hands. Come on. Come on. Hands up. No. Four people. No. Come on. Come on. And did they? More of them, more of them got in there. Maybe they feel bad for me, or they're just like cringing so hard at me they want me to stop, so yeah, they'll raise their hand. Yeah. But you know what? Mission accomplished. I don't care. It was good. And you know the nice thing too is it's like it's so nice to see the kids. Yeah. That was like another thing I was thinking about today. It's like it's a lot of smiles on the first day back. Yep. Yeah, they seem to be ha- be happy to be in the school. Wow, that's a win. Happy that to is. be in the school. Happy to be in the school. Yes. So there will be more chaos to come in more classes than just marching band, but I think I think if you can like hone that and it's not for everyone, like I'm I'm thinking of teachers that I've had that's like not that would not be their vibe. And that's fine. Right. Right. But if that's you, like you kinda like to get a little more I don't know, unhinged, yep. just like excited, energetic. That's like a really fun thing for school. And I think a really healthy thing for kids. Whereas, as you like to say, they just get to bot out for eight hours a day. Go to this classroom, bell rings, open iPad, work, close iPad, bell rings, go to next classroom, open iPad, bell rings, work. Right. And, mm, yeah. 
you got to think about it like, um, you know, the, the ratio, I don't know what the golden ratio is for like. One to 1.618. To what? To one. That's one the, to one point six one. And where does that come in? Like architecture it's the, and yeah, nature it's like a rectangle. So like every rectangle is like that's the ratio. I think one to one point six one eight, and it just like looks appealing. You see that picture with the bass clef, and then it just like keeps turning. You know, that's how it's framed. Oh, that's what that is. Oh, that's the Fibonacci sequence. Fibonacci sequence. Is I, that the same thing? Dude, we're gonna get roasted on YouTube on this reel. This is, let's go. Come this at us. Come at I us. I think so because I think the. You know, like the numbers add up to the next number. Isn't it like the deeper you get into Fibonacci, it's closer to that ratio? Yes. yes. I okay. am a music teacher. That's good. Okay, well, where's I going? Oh, the the golden ratio of, like for me, like very focused, earnest, serious, Linear, what is the ratio of that to chaos or silliness or telling stories or using wacky analogies? What is that ratio for you? I don't know. That's a that's a really good that's a really good question slash like analogy way to look at that. What what would the ratio be? That's good. I don't know, but it's What's well, different for different classes? I was just going to say that, like, I keep on thinking about jazz band. Because jazz band, you have, like, 20 kids, and it's a select group. And so... And by nature, it is more chaotic. It is. You're right. Right. It's loud. It's okay. loud. It's so really loud. It's, <laughs> but also, the maturity level is similar. So when you say you can blow the top off this thing or get... It, it's kind of like burbles together, right? It's more yeah. in tune with each other. But if you have a marching band and you have like 13-year-olds and 18-year-olds and you say be a little bit more crazy on this, like you can get a real diversity and you could just get some kids where their excitement takes them away from the objective, not towards it. Have you seen that before? No, all the time. All the time. Yep. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So it's almost like you you can still do the chaos, but your guardrails have to be really clear. Yes. Right? Because you probably don't need, like if you're teaching Jazz 1, juniors and seniors, some of whom you've had for two, three, right. four years, they kind of know the guardrails. Yes. Anyway, that's true. That's a good way to say it. I was thinking about that too today because I think you and I, when we were teaching, we were both like very clear on what the expectations are mm -hmm. and why we do certain things. Like we taught him standby today, which is standing still and looking straight ahead. It's really fun. Right. But you and I w had both said to the group, I know this seems like odd, but here's why we do this and why it's important. Mm -hmm. And then we're setting the standard for like the rest of the season. And so that when we have those moments of chaos, you can come back and it's safe. Which we were kind of dabbling with that today. I may have gone a little too far sideways while I was going to. I I don't know. On what part? The standby power triangle stuff. I felt like I was making a lot of jokes, maybe too many. I, but okay, sorry. I was out of the room at that time. No, you were back. Cause you were, well, you were riffing with me at some point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because you were talking about the chicken wings? Oh, or something like that. Yeah. 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 But I, I never felt like they got too far away from me. Right. So that and that's like as a teacher, too, you're kind of testing right. the waters as well. But, yeah, learning to find that balance and walk that line. Can be it can be powerful. I'm going to think about that ratio thing. It's good. I almost think it's like one to one. That could be true. That could be true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So let us know. Let okay. us know what you're doing in your class. Yeah, tell us your chaos. Yeah, tell us about how we're wrong in Fibonacci. Oh yeah, please. Right. Yeah, I don't even know if it's one point six one eight. I think that just feels right. That feels right. I got the grease wrong today, because I said forty five. <laughs> That's <laughs> when you wrote you. Wrote <laughs> <laughs> He's. 
I knew where Mr. Golden was going. He was like, we were talking about putting our feet apart. We're like looking at the cracks in the tile, the, the seams. Now put your feet on that, like on a square. And like Mr. Hinkle was talking about pizza. And he's like, well, what's that angle? And he, or we're like, what is it? And he's like, 45 degrees. <laughs> it's like, nope. Hey, it's, hey, now I'm saying called, both feet. I was saying both feet were at 45s. Oh, but I one. was everyone threw down on me so quick. I didn't want to try and save okay. myself. OK, but for the record, let it be known. Both feet at 45s for a total angle oh, of, ni of 90 okay. degrees. OK, thank you. Thank you. Good job, Mr. Angle. Thank you. I do know math. Some days. Yeah, he was talking about Enzo's pizza. He was going like way back to the mall that we used to have across the place. And like now the Concord Mall, you said it's like. It looks like it's been bombed, but it's not. But it's it's like oddly being deconstructed. I drove past it yesterday. Apparently, it's white now. Like right. they painted over it. I don't. And there's I, some parts of it that are gone, like walls that are gone. It's just it it's is weird. odd. And that mall has been there for like fifty years, and now they're what are they doing to it? I don't know. Donating it to <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> landfill. <The> landfill. <laughs> I did want to. I want to say Sabaros, right? Like, because then I could say, you know, my favorite New York pizza <laughs> joint. But I don't feel like everyone would understand that. Right. That's Michael Scott, that's by the Michael way. Scott. But that's Enzo's. Is but the Enzo's, pizza. everyone knows because okay. it's local classic. So that's it. We'll be back tomorrow, bright and early. We will eight o'clock. But next week we get to start at eight thirty. Yes. We we get to sleep that in. But we'll be here an extra four hours. So yeah, win some, you lose some. There you go. Okay, if you like us, find us on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, Chops Woo. underscore podcast. Yep. And listen to the full podcast on Apple, Spotify, or YouTube. Wonderful. Chops podcast. Yep. That's okay. Great. So that's it. That's See it. Okay. So for Steve Peterson. Jack Hinkle. We're out of here. Bye.